Frank Harrington, Ray Wise, who is traveling with his family on an uncharted route to Christmas dinner at his mother-in-law's, passes out while driving and nearly collides with a vehicle traveling the opposite way. Fortunately, no one is wounded, and the other automobile is not visible. Frank returns to the road and notices a woman in white, Amber Smith, in the nearby woods with a child. He returns by car, but nobody is there. But as he turns to look, the woman in white shows up at his window. She appears to be in shock and has a wound on her forehead, so he asks if she's okay. There is no signal on the network, so he asks Brad, Billy Asher, to see if he can contact 911 using his cell phone. Frank offers to take the woman for a trip in their car after they saw a cabin nearby on the way there. Due of her motion sickness, Marion, Alexandra Holden, chooses to relinquish the woman her seat and proceed on foot to the cabin. The woman is approached by the rest of the family in the car, but she remains unresponsive, leading them to believe she is shocked. Frank then makes a stop at a cottage by the road. Frank and Laura, Lynn Shea, enter the cabin after Richard, McCain, departs to go masturbating in the woods, leaving Brad alone with the woman in the automobile. She engages him in conversation before telling him that her child has died. Frank and Laura run back to the car in response to Brad's screams, only to discover that the woman and Brad have vanished. Brad may be seen in the back window of a black hearse as it slowly passes Marion, who is still out for a stroll, while the rest of the family searches for him. Brad has been stolen, so Marion hurries to notify her parents, and they chase after the automobile. They encounter a bump in the road, forcing them to stop once more. When they discover that the bump is actually Brad's dead body, Marion passes out upon seeing him in such a horrific manner. The other passengers load her into the vehicle and restart the engine. Laura declares that all of the other clocks have also stopped at 7.30 p.m., the same time her watch stopped. Richard makes a credible argument for the existence of alien life, but his suggestion is rejected. The family stops when they spot a black baby carriage in the road. Richard exits the carriage to look around and makes fun of his parents by pretending that something is eating him inside. Richard tries to speak to Marion as Frank and Laura begin to argue, but she is shocked and does not reply. When Richard informs his parents that the carriage is back on the road, they believe he is making another joke. Frank starts to drive the carriage once more. As he and Laura get into another heated exchange, Marion abruptly makes a pregnancy announcement. Richard then admits that he uses narcotics after that. Richard meets the woman in white when they arrive at their next destination and she is smoking in the forest. As they start to kiss, the woman abruptly tears off Richard's bottom lip. Richard declares his love for her after which she removes her dress to display her bare body, shocking Richard with the sight. The family finds Richard in the back of the same sluggish, black car from earlier while working on the vehicle and chases after it. They begin to follow the truck in their own vehicle after seeing this as pointless but hit yet another roadblock. They halt as they realize it is Richard's burned-to-death body. Richard was not Frank's son, but rather the outcome of a previous affair that Laura had, says a distraught Laura. Despite this, they placed Richard's body in the trunk of the vehicle as Frank insisted that Richard was still his son. Back on the road, Laura starts acting childishly and even draws a picture of Brad's corpse, exhibiting symptoms of madness. Frank notices a sign pointing to market as the destination. He thinks they are on a military route that is not shown on the map and that this is a naval facility. While Laura is dozing off in the car, Frank shares a childhood memory with Marion. A young child holding a school book was found on the side of the road by a family in a car. They went to pick her up, but as they were in there, they overheard a scream in the back seat and noticed the girl was vanished. The only thing left was her school book, which bore the surname Rose. They recalled that an automobile accident claimed the lives of every member of the Rose family. Frank believes this has some relevance to their predicament, but Marion dismisses his claim as folklore. Laura needs to throw up when she awakes, so they have to stop the car once more. She notices the gun in the car that was supposed to be her brother's gun-obsessed Christmas present. She holds the rifle as a toy and threatens her husband and daughter in her confused, childlike state. She shoots Frank in the leg after he infuriates her by informing her that Richard is dead and she must accept reality. However, Mary intends to the wound before they resume their journey. Outside the window, Laura thinks she can see faces, but they all look so sad. She instructs Frank to stop the car so that she can see a friend of hers who has passed away. Laura unlocks the car door and hops out as Frank declines. When Laura is brought away by the hearse, Frank and Marion halt and observe. 
It stops when Frank fires at it. Laura falls in their direction. She claims to be fine but complains of headaches. She detects a split in her skull's back after sensing it. Before passing away, she tells her father that she made the cheerleading squad as she begins to touch her brain and remembers a night with Alan, the man she had an affair with. She closes her eyes as Frank, inconsolable, places her in the rear of the vehicle. Frank and Marion believe there is no hope. They resume driving on the road after Marion stops Frank from putting the gun to his chin. Frank tells Marion that Alan was a friend of his from back in Detroit as they travel to market. He explains to her that Alan had consulted him for guidance over a married woman with whom he had been having an affair and was unsure of whether or not to continue. Inspiring him by saying he only had one life to live, Frank said. When Frank last visited Alan, he informed him that Laura, a married lady, wanted to discontinue the relationship because she now had a young daughter, Marion. Marion is enraged by his drinking and tosses the bottle out the window of the automobile. Frank complains that they must now try to escape through the woods as it is obviously the only route as they grow weary of traveling on the never-ending roadway. They discover they have gone full circle and are back at the car after going through it, though. Frank prepares a list of things he wants to accomplish when the ordeal is done before they resume driving, but he keeps it from Marion. They are eventually compelled to halt. Frank notices that the path circles and they have returned to the cottage where they started. He enters and lights a match after becoming enraged and thinks that someone is messing with him. He immediately feels the woman in white behind him, blowing it out. Frank reaches for one of the several tools hanging on the walls and starts swinging it about the dark space. When Marion hears the ruckus, she quickly enters the cabin with a torch and removes her father. As they move approach the car, Frank begins to exhibit similar signs of insanity as Laura did. When he begs Marion for his whiskey bottle, she responds by saying she tossed it away. He continues hitting her until she is unconscious. When Frank realizes what he has done, he throws Marion in the car as well. When he notices the woman in white entering the woodland, he moves closer to her brandishing a rifle. He starts to fire and scream in the woods, but when he hears the swishing of a bladed weapon, it is clear that Frank has also been killed. When the automobile ultimately runs out of petrol and Marion is unconscious, she experiences a strange dream in which she must accept the fact that she will also pass away. The hearse appears next to her as she looks outside and notices her family members dead neatly arranged in body bags. Although Marion believes it is for her, the woman in white passes by her and declares, he's not here for you, before getting into the hearse herself. Frank has just crashed into an approaching car being driven by the white-clad woman she had previously seen while dozing off behind the wheel. Unexpectedly, she awakens in a hospital bed with a female doctor wearing a name tag that reads Dr. Market by her side. At the hospital, a charming man in all black introduces himself as the one who discovered Marion and reported the accident. Dr. Market informs him that everyone else involved in the collision all but Marion died. The two enter the parking lot and head towards their respective cars. When the doctor's car won't start, the man offers to give her a ride in his own automobile, a black hearse. The man claims to be a collector after the doctor expresses admiration for the old vehicle. A bonus sequence showing two road sweepers removing debris from the horrific automobile crash is shown after the credits. Frank left a message that reads, 1, buy an Atari, 2, be the coolest grandfather ever, which is found in red. The note is thrown out with the rest of the trash by the road sweeper, eliminating the idea that it was all a dream.